I got 99 problems and my stereo is one. Hi there, everybody. My name's Tom. You're watching High Rant District. And uh, today I want to talk about uh, a problem I'm having with the stereo system. I've got, uh, I noticed after I moved some things around in the home office that the uh, speakers were, uh, you know, one was way louder than the other. Uh, it was, you know, and you have to, instead of like, when you have the balance in the middle on the receiver, you turn the balance, you have to turn the balance way towards one side to try to get these things to balance. And uh, so something is wrong with the receiver I have it hooked to. I mean, I moved the speakers, uh, connections in the back of the stereo to make sure that it's a stereo output, not a speaker problem. And uh, it's definitely the stereo, uh, the stereo receiver in this case. So uh, it's for the home office and you know, as opposed to the main music room where I listen to music if I'm not working. And uh, I want, you know, I just want this thing to work right. I have, uh, it's just uh, basic. Uh, well, let's take a look. Let me show you what I got. All right, so this is the home office where I, when I work from home, which is most of the time, there's my desk. I've got uh, speaker to the left, speaker to the right, stereo's down there, that's my desk, and uh, no, I don't have enough screens. Uh, taking a closer look at the stereo itself, let's see, I've got uh, Technics SL1401s, an old turntable that I uh, got for 50 bucks on uh, Craigslist, had no uh, cartridge, I picked up a uh, a sure cartridge for it and a dust cover. Uh, the CD player is a Nakamichi. I don't know if that'll focus any better. So the CDP2A uh, works fine. It sounds fine. It sounds good actually. It's got a uh, TDA 1541A DAC uh, chip in it that I like a lot and I'm partial to. It's an old CD player though. Probably came out in like 1987, 88, somewhere around there. And then you've got uh, a Marantz receiver. That's a model 2230, so 30 watts per channel. It's got the gyroscope tuner. And, uh, you know, good, solid, basic uh, receiver. It's about, it's got to be about 40 years old. This thing came out in the 70s. And uh, you know it's been doing it's been doing the job uh, until now, and I don't know if you can hear it, but there's also a hum coming out of the speakers. Uh, so I don't know if I have uh, probably have a cabling issue and too much electronics in too close proximity and hundred year old house with uh, you know old wiring. So who knows what's going on there? But essentially, this piece, the stereo, is uh, you know with the balance here right in the middle. The one speaker over here sounds way louder than that speaker. So this thing is a problem. I'm not a guy that uh, does soldering, that knows electronics well, you know. Um, like with the CD player, sometimes the drawer sticks when it opens up, but that's mechanical. Um, and I'm generally okay with fixing mechanical, mechanical things. Uh, but when you get into the electronics end of things, um, I, I don't know my ass from my elbow. Uh, I would like to learn one day, but now's not the time. Uh, maybe when I'm retired someday, if I ever retire. Uh, you know, you give me a, a much better with uh, fiddling with a carburetor on a car, you know, and manually fixing something than uh, if for fuel injection. I, I don't have a clue. So anyway, back to the stereo. So the stereo's got to be replaced. And uh, this, this whole stand, the speaker stand, is like a plastic, cheap, lightweight, uh, something or other I got from uh, Goodwill probably like 10 or 15 bucks you know if you bump into it I don't know if you can see that too well but it definitely shakes if you bump into it I've got three dogs two of them are big boxer dogs and they bump into things uh, so anyway the turntable <laughs> all right let me go over the problems with the stereo besides the receiver the drawer sticks on the CD player sometimes uh, maybe 
20% of the time. And then if I slap this thing on the top, it works. So I just really got to take it apart and sort that out. That I can fix. Turntable um, is usually fine, but it comes with the wires. The RCA cables are already connected to it. And if the cables are sitting funny, then the left channel doesn't sound so good. And that's uh, it's definitely a turntable thing. But this is a, a very heavyweight turntable. I like it a lot. Sounds good with the with the uh, sure cartridge I have on there. Um, and it's handy, you know, it's right next to the desk, so if I'm doing some work, just pop on some music. Uh, a lot of times I do play CD just because if I'm working, uh, you know, I don't have to stop and flip the record. But anyway, all right, back to the point. My, the point of this video essentially is uh, I got to replace this receiver. Uh, so, you know, what do I replace it with? All right, so now what do I replace the stereo with? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a guy that digs, you know, vintage. Uh, I like the old stuff. You know, I'm an old person. I like old stuff. You know, I, I feel like it's, uh, first of all, it's a green thing to do to have, uh, to make use of what already exists and not keep on buying new things that were made recently. Blah, blah, blah. I'm not hippy dippy about it. Clearly. I mean, if I cared about the earth, would I be buying, you know, plastic? You know, records are plastic. Uh, you know, we're all eco-terrorists, you know, if we like vinyl. So, you know, so, um, blah, 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 talking out of my ass. So anyway, uh, so replacing the stereo, it's an unexpected expense. Uh, I didn't want to spend a ton of money. Uh, I don't make a ton of money. Um, I'm not poor either. But, uh, you know, I'm working. I have a job, so it's like, well, I don't have to go for the cheapest possible thing, but I want something that works. And I appreciate vintage, but I've had like a series of vintage things. Like, you know, just this thing goes wrong, that thing goes wrong, the other thing goes wrong. I'm at the point where, you know, I just want, just want stuff to work. Uh, and I value simplicity. So I want something that's just, uh, you know, a receiver. Uh, you know, it doesn't even have to be a receiver. Just a, it could be an integrated amplifier. It... Uh, I can tune in the radio on the internet so it doesn't really have to have a, a radio in it. Uh, just want simple. I don't like a big display showing a bazillion, you know, uh, electronic looking things. Uh, so simple. And that receiver also has a, a phono input on it. So I didn't need a separate amplifier or anything. So what do I go with? Uh, I'd like to keep it at $500 or less, and, uh, you know, that's a large chunk of money that I didn't expect to be st spending, but I figure, like, right, for that amount of money, I should be able to get something that's quality and that will last. So that's what I'm looking for. Uh, and headphone input, input on the front, because around the way, away from my uh, the home office, is the living room, so if... My better half is she's playing music or watching television or something. I want to be able to plug in my headphone. So I want, you know, headphone input on the front. And not every new stereo has that. Anyway, let's see what I got. All right. First up, let's talk about the uh, stand that I got. Uh, I wanted to get rid of that wobbly Goodwill rack. And, uh, and this is part of the $500. This is my justification for this. But... Uh, this uh, rack is a ARI Audio Resources International, the triple play quad in black. Gives you an idea of the dimensions there. It's uh, about 30, it's 32 tall, about 23, uh, 20 to 23 wide. It's uh, four shelves, which is I wanted more shelves. I don't like stacking gear on top of uh, top of other gear. Uh, it's a steel frame. Uh, the inside of the uh, the legs, as it were, uh, can be filled with uh, sand or you know shot or whatever to really make this thing heavier. It's uh, let's see PVC wrapped uh, MDF shelves. It's got plenty of room on it, and uh, it's got the height I wanted. The other one, the stereo rack that exists, is about I think it's 30 inches tall, so this would be 
32. And uh, I'm not going to do an unboxing on that. I'll just show you what it looks like when it's all put together. But, uh, and this is a, I don't know when we talk about the price of things, but I'm going to go over what I paid here. I think this rack is normally a $300 rack. I got it for $150 from uh, audioadvisor.com because it's a, I guess they call it B-stock. Uh, they say, you know, there might be uh, some scratches here or there or weld that's, uh, you know, maybe rusty or something. I don't know. Uh, I'm not looking to show off the rack. I just want it to be a sturdy, well-made rack. So if there's any blemishes, I don't really care. And, uh, you know, it's got the pointy feet on it. And, you know, you can kind of tell from the diagram, but this is not a standard uh, four-leg system. It's uh, three, you know, two posts on the two legs on the front and one in the back. And uh, as Tudor will tell you, uh, Two Turtle, I uh, love that channel. I uh, haven't seen much lately, but anyway, hi, Tudor. I hope you're well. The, supposedly the uh, three-leg uh, thing is more stable than four. Anyway, oh, and I don't want those uh, little pointy spiky feet digging into the floor, so I got some uh, little cone, little uh, things to put on the bottom that those can sit on and not dig into the hardwood floor. Moving on. All right, next up, I uh, got a Cambridge Audio integrated amp. It is the Cambridge Audio Acer 351A integrated amp. Let's see, weighs a little over 16 fat pounds. The finish is black. When I pick this thing up, if I just hold it, you can see that it's kind of one side is tilting way down more than the other. It's got a pretty decent sized uh, toroidal transformer in there. And, uh, and uh, oh, in my, uh, one of my dogs, uh, just in case, uh, he was looking out for me and uh, just in case I was gonna chew on the box, he was uh, gonna make sure that it wasn't gonna get poisoned, so he tested it out. And uh, apparently it tested out okay. So we're gonna have to open that up. So that's the integrated amp. However, so the good thing is, you know, that this thing was uh, 398 bucks shipped, uh, and uh, I think it's uh, 45 watts per channel, which is way stronger than I need for this little room. Um, but it does not have uh, a phono stage, and that turntable does not have a built-in preamp or so I need a phono stage so yay it's under five hundred dollars by a hundred bucks uh, however no phono stage now what all right so needed a uh, phono preamp and I went with the uh, Parasound Z phono phono preamp there's about 200 bucks shipped it uh, does both moving magnet and moving coil this thing is about 200 bucks not sure uh, it's really appropriate for a, for a moving coil cartridge if I ever get that la di da about my stereo. Uh, but uh, it's a separate preamp. And again, you know, when I talk about valuing simplicity, I, you know, it's sort of like, you know, my attitude towards a, uh, a TV slash CD, uh, a TV slash uh, DVD player combo. When everything's all built into one, when one thing goes wrong, the whole thing goes wrong. So in a case like this, you know, it's the, the receiver that I got, or the integrated amplifier, I should say, is uh, is simple. You know, if the phono preamp goes out now, I can just replace it. Or if I want to upgrade it, you know, get a different sound out of my turntable, that's a, replacing just this one part, not the whole thing. So anyway, blah, blah, blah. Let me get these things open, take a look, and plug them in and see what happens. All right, so we got this thing opened up. Here's the integrated amp, comes in a nice bag, uh, better than plastic, I guess. We've got instructions, uh, the box cutter was mine, a uh, separate power cord, uh, and note that, you know, I, it was a big deal, it was one of the things I looked for was that I wanted the power cord to be separate from the unit. And uh, I didn't want it to be a wall ward. I just wanted the power cord to be a power cord so I could upgrade the power cord. And 
This is a remote control. It's going to be right next to my desk, so I don't really care. Uh, it's a silver remote control, which doesn't match the receiver, but oh well. Okay, so let's get this thing open. All right, so there's the integrated amp. Not sure what that's about. So here you go, Cambridge Audio. And uh, it's an uh, Acer 351A integrated amplifier. Uh, very simple. Buttons on the front for uh, five sources. Uh, sixth one is a USB. I'll get to that in a moment. And then you've got a uh, power button, uh, MP3 connection for an iPhone or whatever, or you know, cell phone, MP3 player, a uh, regular headphone jack. Uh, this is for speaker B because it'll drive two sets of speakers. This is a direct button that uh, bypasses the bass and the treble. Uh, if you just want it to be just pure signal, nothing in the way, which I kind of like, so that'll probably just stay on direct. Uh, nice, fine uh, volume button and balance. And let's take a look at the back. All right, here's the back of it. You've got, uh, I wanted a separate power cord, so that's where the power cord would go. This will handle two sets of speakers. Uh, just simple analog inputs. You know, source one, two, three, four, five. Uh, recording out right there. And this is weird. I don't mind this. I wasn't looking for this, but it's got uh, USB audio input. Since the, this particular stereo will be pretty close to a, uh, you know, my computers, I can uh, just run a USB cable and then the, it has a, what, a Burr Brown DAC in here, I think, that will override the DAC that's a far cheaper one, I'm sure, in my uh, laptops. So I could, uh, you know, probably get better sound out of the audio that's coming out of my computer uh, if I care. I don't know if I'm going to hook that up, but it's there. So there you go. That's the back of the uh, integrated amplifier. Okay, moving on to the uh, phono preamplifier by Parasound. There it is. Z Phono Phono Preamplifier. Here's a look at it. It's, uh, if we turn this around, it's also got a uh, separate plug, you know, so I can upgrade the cable. Now, in the back of uh, basic, you've got uh, ground, input, switch to uh, change it between a uh, uh, moving magnet or a uh, moving coil. Uh, output to output to the uh, integrated amplifier. It's also got a, uh, let's see if we can focus on that. Maybe, maybe not. Anyway, it's an AC polarity switch. Uh, you can invert the polarity if there's uh, some sort of hum going on. Supposedly that helps get rid of any hum if there is one. So we'll see. I don't know. Anyway, so to uh, take a look at the size of these things, the phono preamplifier is smaller than the integrated amp. That gives you an idea of the size comparison. Anyway, uh, let's put this all together and uh, see if this helps anything. All right, everything's hooked up. Uh, the light's kind of bad for this, but the rack is all together. Uh, solid steel, I don't notice any defects, so this is B-stock, this is beautiful B-stock. Turntable up top, the uh, Cambridge Audio uh, amp, integrated amp, and then right below it, and the CD player, and at the bottom is the Parasound Phono amp. I've tried everything out, everything works good, sounds great. Speakers have balanced sound. Uh, I didn't mention it earlier, but I have a paper shredder down here. And uh, with the other stereo set up, when I was uh, shredding something and the stereo was on, the speakers would be like, <laughs> like terrifyingly awful sound in speakers. And uh, that's gone now. Uh, there's no hum in the speakers anymore. Turntable sounds proper. CD is playing right now, sounds proper. Everything looks good. All right, I should also add that uh, I added a uh, 
surge protector to this whole system. Uh, an upgraded surge protector that's uh, Monster Green Power. That's a picture of it. Uh, the green part is that when you uh, plug the, uh, in this case, the, uh, the integrated amp into the uh, green power plug, uh, it turns off, when you turn it off, if it's not drawn power, the stuff that's plugged into the other uh, three plugs, the bottom, which is the bottom row, uh, the three left-handed ones, left-sided ones, uh, and the green power one is the bottom uh, right-hand one. So bottom right one is the integrated amp, the other three to the left of it are the green power, are green power plugs that will not uh, draw power when the units are off if the main unit is powered off. So that's kind of cool. But the biggest thing was, uh, let's see, I don't know if we can really see it here, but it's got a, uh, it says a patented uh, HD clean power removes noise and interference to protect your AV equipment and maximize performance. I guess this is made for an audio video system, but whatever, here it is. Uh, you can see the dirty power and the clean power. So I was just hoping that this would take noise out of the situation uh, as far as like, the speakers going nuts when the uh, uh, paper shredder's running and also whatever was causing the hum before, which was probably the uh, receiver at the time. But anyway, so uh, this was another piece of the puzzle, this uh, monster green power power strip but also, it's a 2160 joules, and it also uh, does something to clean the power, which is, uh, you know, clean, steady electricity, which uh, is not going to hurt. Anyway, there you go. I still got 99 problems, but the stereo ain't one. Thanks for watching.